Today we are conducting an experiment. We know Roy gets some pretty good results with his bootlo in the row rut, but he's intrigued to find out if the call stirs the juices with the smallest of our deer species, the muntjac. Muntjac don't have a season as such, breeding all year round. But are they going to be interested enough to come and have a closer look at Roy? We're out in Bedfordshire with Mike and Jason who run muntjacstalker.com. They've been giving stalkers the chance to get close to munties for years, but they've recently taken on some more ground so can comfortably take off 150 head a year. They also have Chinese water deer, but that's for another day. What we'll do, Roy, is we'll walk down to these uh, oak trees. This right. time of year, you often find that the wind checker underneath the oak trees yep. with uh, eating the acorns. And then we'll cut across the next field uh, out in the acorn, just gra glass around the edge of the um, set aside strips. And then we'll get into the meadows and we'll be find around the edge of those okay, uh, grass well. fields. And uh, we'll go from there. And uh, hopefully the weather will uh, brighten up for us a little bit. So. For the first 45 minutes we make our way across some pasture. Muntjac can sometimes be found browsing along the hedgerow here. Unlike Roe, they don't seem to be bothered by livestock. With no signs we cross over to a field with a cover crop. It seems an ideal chance to give the call a blast. You reckon it might be worth a call in there, just see if anything moves. Give it a chance. Yeah. Any cover around the edge of it as well, nice bit of bramble cover. From the right, we get a quick response. A buck bounding through the low vegetation. He spots us and as quickly as he appears, he hightails it out of there. It's a great first effort. The old patello does it again, so not a bad response, first squeak. And we had one come, uh, come trotting in there, so uh, he came into what, 20, 30 yards there, um, but didn't present the shot. So uh, he, uh, unfortunately he made us, I mean obviously he was just standing out and we just thought we'd give it a try. And he disappeared off back up there, so uh, we'll go on and see if we do any better next time. We cover some more ground, skirting around the field margins. A lack of deer means Roy has an excuse to call again. Another buck just has to have a look. He appears on the edge of the wood a good few hundred yards away. He looks like he's coming in our direction, but he ducks off into the hedgerow. For a moment we wonder if he might pop out closer to us, but no go. I think I overcalled on that one. So he wasn't quite sure he came from the wood quite quickly across. And then I got a little bit excited and done called a bit too much, I think. For this particular parcel of stalking ground, Roy has one last blast. We think we've drawn a blank, but Mike, who's been waiting to pick us up on the other side of the field, thinks otherwise. Apparently you right. saw a couple I, come I through. I saw two does coming out of this, this, this hedgerow, and they ran across this open field um, behind you. Right, so they were coming in behind us. As... I presume they were coming into your call. Um, they were probably trying to use the wind and, and come around behind you. Yeah, makes sense. To see what was going on. That's it. So there, was, to... there was nothing chasing them, they just, they just came out into the open field and and went across there quite fast. Excellent, so they were, uh, there was definitely a response there. There was. Even though we didn't see a lot from That's that right. side. <laughs> Excellent. Time for a change of setting and a change of stalker. Mike is looking after us now and he'll be taking us through some really beautiful woodland. We spot hares and a black squirrel en route. The rain and some late feeding under the full moon might mean these little deer are tricky today, tucked up in the relatively long grass. So opportunity knocks again and Roy puts himself against a background that really shows the benefits of camo. This time it's a complete blank. However, this next effort shows that the muntjac might be responding, but not in the same way as other deer. After a couple of minutes of calling we start to move and Mike spots movement. There are about half a dozen deer behind us. The closest is this nice metal buck. Roy continues to keep him interested. We even see him scrape the earth. He's too nice for us, but the guys here do have some impressive animals for trophy hunters. 
we can offer up to gold medal. Obviously, you're not going to go out and get a gold medal on your first stalk. So normally we say, you know, you've got to book in, you know, probably four stalks to get yourself a, a medal head. There's no guarantee because it's stalking, you know. But what we have got is probably more deer than, than most people. We're quite lucky. I mean, the origins of, of Muntjac and Chinese water deer was at Woburn, which is obviously not far away. Um, and we've got the right terrain uh, here, you know, a lot of bramble, uh, a lot of rushy ground, ideal for uh, the environment of, of Muntjac. So uh, we've, we've got plenty, it's just finding them that's, that's a, the problem. After our standoff, we move on and cause some more fascinating behaviour. We plonk ourselves in the open and start calling. Mike has never heard anything like it. We think there are five separate bucks barking. None show, but a few yards up the ride we spot an injured doe. She's limping, but Roy can't get a clean shot. We head into the cover to try and find her, and more muntjac break cover. Goodness knows how many deer we have passed unsighted. When we find our way back to the ride, a heavily pregnant female is grazing about 150 yards in front of us. Roy takes his opportunity. She's hit hard and goes down a few yards from the spot. That worked out well. We had that little doe that we were trying to get that disappeared off up there and she had a broken leg. Unfortunately, we couldn't get onto her. Um, I just couldn't get a clear shot through the, uh, the wood there. Um, came out onto the ride and uh, a very heavily pregnant doe standing just up the ride there. Um, perfect broadside shot and uh, away we went. So yeah, fantastic day. Absolutely superb. Yep. Muntjac appeal to stalkers here and abroad, and this type of hunting is also relatively cheap for cull animals. And it's not as easy as many believe. It's a very tricky sort of stalking, it is. Um, you, you tend to bump more deer than you, than you get a chance to shoot at, or even think you're going to shoot at. Well, as you can see, that, 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 as, as we've come through the woods now, um, and yet this morning, first thing, we saw very little. And no response to the call in the wood earlier on. And all of a sudden you get four or five deer all, all of a sudden want to, want to uh, show interest. I think that must be the main difference with the, the muntjac though, because they're rutting all year round. Yes. You've just got to find a buck that's receptive. That's right. At the time. And, and he gets everybody going. Yeah. Roy finishes the gralic and this compact little carcass can be tucked away in a backpack. It's back to base for a coffee and it's a chance for Mike to talk to Roy about how to get the muntjac responding to the call. For me it was very interesting because when we were out in the open field, we just did a few little peeps and we had one coming in through the crop. Yeah, um, I think with, in the wood, we've got a lot of cover in the wood at the moment. If we could, if we could have seen more, I think yeah. you'd have seen those deer approaching. Yeah. They seem to be getting closer. That's it, because with the, the big buck, as he was coming in, he was coming in behind. Yes. But we'd already moved from the position because we thought nothing was coming. But That's right. Yeah, he was That's obviously right. obviously just sneaking up behind us. Yeah. But no, I think with it, I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, it's, uh, it'll be interesting to see other people's experiences with, uh, with calling the muntjac. But, you know, when I was, when I was doing it there... Obviously just emulating what we do really with the row, but trying it a little bit softer. So it's just a... Right. A few little peeps there. Mm. Obviously you can you vary the volume, etc. depending on how hard you push down on it. And also you can put it in your pocket to mm -hmm. muffle the sound or uh, you know, whichever way it goes. But it was, I, th I think the other thing that surprised me was the, the distance that, that um, one of the deer um, that came out of the, the, the side of the wood picked it up from. Mm -hmm. So he picked that up from a, a good few hundred yards away. away. And we weren't yeah. doing it that loudly. So I think it probably needs to be a little bit softer and spend a little bit more time on the calls and, and, and see what happens. And wait for a little, little, yeah. a, a little longer afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's certainly something that I, sh I should experiment with. It's, no. it's new to me. And I'm, That's it. It's, I'm, uh, I'm grateful that you've, uh, you've shown me it. No, it's, well, it's, it's just, uh, I mean, it was fantastic just watching the behaviours there, wasn't mm, it? So, mm, mm. yeah, another little tool in the, uh, the, the kit. The That's it. It's been a fascinating morning stalking bucks in Bedfordshire. And if you want to know any more about the stalking offered by Jason and Mike, check out their website, www.muntjackstalker.com, and drop them a line. <laughs>